Hey friends, and welcome back to the Call to Lead podcast. So today I am going to be reflecting over the past one year, which this is seriously crazy to even think about, but yes, I have not posted or put one thing on social media, whether that's Facebook, Instagram, <laughs> TikTok, you name it, in one year, which is mind blowing. And I'm here to kind of tell you some of the lessons that I have learned from being able to take that step back away and look at something that absolutely is causing a lot of harm when it comes to the mental health, the comparison or FOMO that is so rampant in our industry. However, I'm also going to be sharing how it definitely is one of those tools that can and should be leveraged for your business. So I'm really excited to dive into today's episode, sharing all about my heart from what it looked like to take my business completely off social for a year. So let's dive in. Okay, so maybe you are like me and I hear this all the time and I've heard this a lot in the year that I have been doing this podcast and sharing my heart at all over the place and all the places except for social media. Actually, in a few cases, I actually have done trainings on social media, I should say, within private groups or in coaching calls or things like that. But I have been <laughs> preaching the quote, scale without social concept, which is still a pillar of what I talk about on this podcast, but not so much from the, like using the word without social completely, but more without having to be a slave to social media. So I still believe in all of those things. I want to preface that this isn't like some shit sort of change of heart. This is not another pivot away from the fact that you do not have to sell your soul to social media in order to do well in business. You don't have to be an online influencer and you definitely don't have to feel like a slave. Okay. And you don't have to, you don't have to go crazy trying to do it. There's a, there are a million ways to do it. And that's one of the things that we're going to talk about today. And I just happen to take the intentional step to set the example of what it would look like, what it could look like to intentionally completely remove myself from social. And so I'm going to be sharing that today. So if you've been feeling maybe that pull to step away completely, or if you're just curious to know like what my year has been like, <laughs> get ready because I'm going to be sharing all the things today. So let me share the backstory for this in case this is the first episode that you're listening to and you don't know what I'm talking about. So I started this podcast a little over a year ago, and I knew that I had a heart for the podcast to be able to serve the entrepreneur or more specifically the network marketer who's looking to grow her business in a different way and in a way that's really counter to what the world tells us that we have to do, but also wants to do it in a way that's honoring her faith and honoring her integrity. And one of those things, those internal battles that I kept seeing come up over and over again a year ago was people just feeling this need and the coaching that was out there was all centered around growing this massive following online, whether that be on Instagram, whether it be on the emerging platform of TikTok, which people were seeing people take off even a year ago, they're still doing that. Or again, looking at different ways to leverage Facebook now that they have dove into reels and lives are still going strong. And then there's business pages and parties and this and that. And Oh my. And so what I'm seeing on my team and in the industry, and to be quite frank, my own personal business was this sense of FOMO and comparison that was driving the actions in people's businesses rather than how they could serve people best using their individual gifts, skill sets, passions, time, all of those things. And how can they, more importantly than building a following, how can they better connect with people and create conversations that lead to the kind of trust that is necessary in order to build a business. And so it was a bit of a bold move to put up a post that said, all right, I'm doing it. I'm walking away completely. And full disclosure, I initially did not intend to completely step aside from it. I just intended to stop trying to grow my social media following. But my husband at the time was, the, he's still my husband, but meaning at the time, my husband, see, that's where your words have to, they matter, the placement of the words. But at the time, my husband told me that he thought that it would be really confusing if I'm trying to really go hard on this message of scaling without social media, if I'm in fact posting anything on social media. And so I was like, okay, fine, I will... I'll take myself off. I will do this in a different way. And I will set that example and we'll see what happens. And I knew when I put that post that it was probably not forever. I was like, we'll just see what happens. 
but I knew that I wanted to give it the time and the commitment that it took to really understand the dynamics of the impact that social media had on my business so that I could then go in turn and tell you how you might could benefit from my experience, good or bad. And so that's what I did. I haven't posted in a year. Full disclosure, I am on YouTube. I did a few months ago, I decided to start a YouTube channel, which there was a little conversation about whether or not that is social media or not. I decided that number one, there's freedom in how we run our business. And for me, a lot of the issues that were present and the factors of Instagram and TikTok and Facebook and things like that, I was not really seeing on social media or on YouTube. And, and it also, again, and the things we're going to talk about today, it definitely uses my passions and gifts and skill sets in terms of providing an educational platform. For example, filming this on video alongside for the podcast, this is an example of I can reach more people, I can serve more people through the platform of video because I do feel confident in doing that. So anyway, I have it on YouTube, but I don't count that as social. <laughs> Even if you Google is YouTube social media, it says yes. Okay, backstory is I decided to step away. The reason that I decided to step away again was to really gain more of a high level vision of what is the impact that social media has on our business? What does it look like? What should it look like? All of the things. And so today I am really excited to share the reflections and the inspiration that I have been given for my year off of Facebook. And that is based in my word of the year, which is freedom. And that the beautiful thing about this business model is we do have choices. And what I mean by that is Network marketing has been around for generations long before social media was even a thing. So absolutely the principles that apply then before social media still apply now that you are going to build your business based off of connections, conversations, and the trust that comes from being a real live human. And the fact of the matter is that some people can make that a little bit better in an online world, right? In social media, which is why attraction marketing has come into the mix and into the fray. And so you've got everybody who, some people who are t not tech savvy at all, who don't want to learn that side of social media to the people who maybe like me, who had a traditional business and understand how marketing on social media works and want to try to integrate that into their network marketing business. Then you have the absolute boom of the influencer sphere, which is basically people making money by sharing the things that they love online, right? So you've got that rise. And then you have the people who are trying to set an example, maybe to their kids, which that was also wrapped up in me as I wanted to prove to my family that I didn't have to be documenting every facet of my life to portray some personal brand online. And regardless of where you are, I'm really excited because I have, through this journey, been able to narrow it down to the four ways, the four freedom choices that you have in terms of working your business when it comes to social media. And I'm gonna be the first to tell you that there's not a wrong or a right way to do it. That is dependent on you as the individual person. It is dependent on what your goals are. It's dependent on what your gifts and skill set are, okay? So bear with me as I break each one of these down, knowing that you, as you're listening, I want you to think, okay, does this apply to me and where I am and where my heart is in this moment? Or does this apply to my teammate? Is this apply to my upline, my sideline, or that girl that I'm trying to emulate or that I know I don't want to emulate? Whatever, whatever it is that you're thinking, you're probably going to fit somewhere in one of these different buckets. And I'm going to tell you of these four methods or ways that you can use social media, I'm going to share the highs, the lows, and my thoughts, because guess what? I have done all four of them now in my business. I have in the six years that I've been with my company and in the 20, oh my gosh, this is crazy, 20, 20 years of being an entrepreneur, I have been in each one of these, these different ways of doing it. And so I have experience. I've watched my friends do it. I still have people that I love that are doing each one of these different things. So y'all ready to buckle up, dive into the four areas. Okay. So the first area is, and they're all going to start with the letter. I love it when I get that inspiration. There's another I word to make this really simple for you. Okay. So the first way to do it is to ignore social media, which is what I've been do doing for the last year. Okay. And what I mean by that is you are like, nope, not doing it. Not going to download Instagram, not going to post on Facebook, but I still want to build a business. And can that be done? Yes, it can. The reason I say that is because of all the things I've been preaching to you guys is that, yes, there are principles in this business that existed long before social media. So if it could be done then, it can be done now. And yes, but there's a big but and a caveat. 
if you have big goals in your business, if you want to exemplify, for example, the path that I have taken to be one of the top 10 artists in our, or we're called artists in our company, but top 10 distributors in our company and build a team of thousands and build a legacy residual income. I'm going to be here the first to tell you after my year off, I think it could be quite challenging if you're trying to do it using the ignore method. So one of the analogies that you'll hear me talk about a lot, I've done entire episodes on this, is the analogy of the walker, jogger, runner, and then the eagle, the soar. The fourth option is to soar on wings like eagles, okay? So whether you are walking, jogging, running, or soaring, that is another thing to factor in as you're thinking about each of these different ways that you can leverage social media for your business. So the ignore strategy, can it work for a walker? Sure. Can it work for a jogger who's dabbling and just wants to share the the makeup and maybe have a couple of in-home parties each month to be able to share with the people in her circle closest to her? Absolutely. She can build a business. You can build a business that brings in hundreds, if not a thousand. That's probably about the revenue that I've gotten from the new business that I've brought in by focusing. And that'll be another episode for another day talking about the areas of how I focused on my business over the last year. But primarily it's been through in-person, it's been through tech, leveraging tech apps and things like that. And it's also been growing my residual or passive income through my, through our reorders by serving my customers really, really well. Okay. So these are the primary ways. And of course the podcast, I've gotten some customers through the podcast journey, which has been fun, fun too. But in a sense, that has probably attributed to hundreds, if not thousands-ish dollars. And it definitely necessarily hasn't won me any top sales awards or gathered me any kind of amazing results from it. But is it enough to give me the kind of business that if I just wanted a little bit extra for my life? Yes, it can. And could that build over time? Sure. If I was really consistent and really dedicated to that that endeavor, okay? But here's why I don't, I'm going to share before I get into the other three versions of doing it, I want to share more about why I don't think the ignore option is the best solution if you want to grow your business to the long-term legacy passive income type of business model. And honestly, depending on, especially if you are a very extroverted social person, another reason why it's not so great is the fact that it does disconnect you from the world because Just like when cars were invented, this is an analogy that I heard on an amazing documentary that I just watched called Childhood 2.0. I definitely recommend it. I'll link it in the show notes here for you guys to watch it, but it's called Childhood 2.0 and it talks about the impacts of the growth in the tech world, phones, iPads, and social media in particular, the impact that it's having on our children's mental health and anxiety, suicide rates, and all of the things. And it's alarming, you guys. It's really scary. And... I definitely highly recommend you watch that video. But of course, I'm sitting here watching it from the scale without social (laughs) lens, right? And I'm like, okay, what's the answer? What's the solution? Like, what? tell us what to do, people. And they had a beautiful example that really spoke to my heart that I want to be the theme of my reason that I will be stepping back into social media socially. I'll get to that in a minute. And here's the reason why. When cars were invented, they obviously were a huge innovation that everybody was so so excited about. They were expensive, but yet they they made such a difference because people went from being able to just have to walk or ride horses. They could actually have an automated way to get them there. So it was a huge blessing in a lot of ways. However, by the time the 60s rolled around, I remember reading that cars actually caused three times more deaths than the all the other things combined. So basically cars, even though they were a good thing, they were killing people and they were killing people like left and right and injuries. And there were just, it was really an epidemic when the automobile took off. But does that mean that we shouldn't drive cars or fly airplanes or use any of these incredible innovations that have been done? Probably not. So what is the solution? It's to, and this is what they said, it's to increase on that, the documentary Childhood 2.0. They said, it's, you've got to increase the education the innovation and the safety aspects of the way the platforms are being used and leveraged. And some of that is on and is gonna be on our governmental policies. Some of it's gonna be coming from the companies themselves. You've probably heard that a lot of the founders of these tech companies don't even allow their kids to have phones, let alone have the apps that they work for, which is alarming. But it's also gonna come from people like me and people like you, if you believe in this as well, 
to really advocate for a better way to do it, for a healthier way to do it. And to be able to integrate boundaries or like to use the car analogy again, guardrails, because Andy Stanley says this best when setting up guardrails for your life, a guardrail on the road, like if you're driving on the guardrail or where the guardrail is placed, like you're not going off the cliff, right? But if you're just a little bit further, then you're going to go down the cliff or whatever the guardrail is protecting you from, or maybe it's the other lane, right? The other lanes of traffic. So it's not so much where the guardrail is placed that's the problem, it's what's just on the other side of it. So you can, and this is what I am choosing to do, you can implement guardrails and boundaries within your business when it comes to things like setting screen time limits on your phone or not allowing yourself to download certain apps or to really focus your energy on where laser focus, and we're gonna talk about some of the other ways if you're not gonna go the ignore route of how you can use your time and energy. But my, that really just gave me so much clarity and my new understanding of this, having taken the time, which I do not regret for a minute to really pull myself entirely off, is that just, I wouldn't recommend you not driving a car. I wouldn't recommend if you're trying to grow a business to go with the ignore route, okay? Because like, I've even had people say to me like, oh, do you still sell makeup? And I'm like, yes. But again, if they haven't seen me online, or which because they haven't, right? Or if they haven't stumbled upon my YouTube channel, which you can go ahead and I'll drop the link here if you guys want to look up some uh, some awesome little fun makeup videos and talking more about how Saint works. You can check that out in the show notes as well. But if you haven't seen that or you haven't seen me in person or you haven't heard through my podcast or my, my email list or anything like that, what I'm doing, I could totally see where people would maybe think that this isn't something that I do anymore. Your online pres presence, especially as any kind of business owner, but especially as a network marketer, it is a little bit tied to your presence online. One of the reasons or several of the reasons I should say that first ignore method, it is possible. Can you do it? Yes. Is it something now that I've done it for a year that I would recommend if you want to do big things in your business? No, but you do not have to do it the number two way. So I would say about 1% of people might want to do the ignore way. Okay. Like meaning completely pull off and can they do it? Yes. But only probably 1% of people could do it have the, the desire and do all the hard work of the in-person connections, results, all of those things that are necessary for doing it, okay? The next one is the other extreme, okay? So we've got ignore is the one extreme. All the way on the other side is the influencer sphere, okay? So once again, this is gonna be probably about 1% of people that have the natural gifts, the natural skill sets, the desire to put in the effort that it takes to build a massive following online based off of sharing the things that you love and creating a personal brand for yourself that your company is a part of, but it's essentially you sharing it probably alongside a couple of different companies. I have friends in our business and in other companies that are, they're very present online and they've built amazing massive followings. And a lot of them do, they'll have affiliate links for certain things and they will, they will, they will showcase multiple different products because that's what they love to do. They love taking the product that they love and the company that they're signed up a part of and sharing it alongside the clothes that they wear or the health and fitness tips, or maybe their hairstylist and they're showing how to, which PS have over the year too, if you haven't seen me in a while, I've embraced the curly girl status. This is like day three hair after playing a round of golf, but I'm seriously obsessed with the curly girl method. But anyways, <laughs> you're not going to see me show up as an online influencer talking about it, but that's a perfect example of someone who maybe could do that. That's a niche, if you will, that someone could get into if they were selling hair products or they were with a company that sells that sort of thing. Okay. But the influencer business model is something that so many people feel like they have to do in order to build a business. When I'm here to tell you, I actually, I see it over and over again, that they actually have a harder time building a business that's based on residual, passive, duplicatable, results because nobody can do it. Nobody wants to do it. People probably aren't joining because they're like, oh, I could never do what you do. I would never do 10, 12 stories of my life every day or do you know two reels a day or TikToks a day or anything like that. They don't have a desire to do it. Or they don't necessarily have the personality or the passion or the confidence or the skill set to, when they do try to do it, it doesn't have the same results or they're trying to integrate several different of these methods that I'm talking about today when my advice to you is to pick one and stick with it, okay? Pick your path and fill your funnel like we talked about before if you're gonna be on social media, okay? But 
I think what happens is people like dabble here and there. Whereas if you want to be an online influencer, go for it, girl. But know that you're going to have to go all in and you're going to have to figure out what's effective in that business model in that industry. And you also have to accept the fact that it's probably not going to duplicate well on your team. So I just want you to soak that up. If you're feeling like you're, you are showing up in that online influencer, you've got 10, 20, 30, 50, 100,000 followers on Instagram, and you're frustrated that no one on your team is doing anything, they're probably not doing it at the level that you are, but it's that they're, say, for example, in our company, if you sell $5,000 of makeup, which is a lot of makeup, that puts you in the top 1%. But what happens is you take someone who's selling $50,000 worth of makeup and someone who's selling $500 of makeup, or again, 5,000 is gonna feel less than, and I hear and see that all the time. And my friends, I will stand by this to the day or die that you do not have to be an online influencer to do this business model. So if that is you and you love to create content and you love to share all the things, whether it is your hair, your clothes, your all of that, you go all in there, but just know that it might not duplicate on your team, okay? Because only 1%. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm all about figuring out the things that work for the 99 percenters, okay? Because that's the best part about this business model is when it's done right, anybody can do it. I learned from my mentor, Bob Heilig, that when you're creating your systems and people, again, don't they don't do what you tell them to do. They do what they see you do. So when you're implementing your systems, if they're not simple enough that a kindergartner can figure it out, or I've got a fourth grade daughter, like if it's not something that I could show her how to do easily, then it's not going to be something that I'm going to do in my business, okay? Whereas becoming an online influencer is incredibly tough. There's some would say there's probably luck involved with figuring out the vir virality piece of it, making a piece of content go viral. And it's just not something that you can necessarily teach someone how to do. And if you do, it's going to take years of mindset work, years of hard work, and maybe then you can be build a successful income with that model. So I'm not going to say you shouldn't do it. This one is if that suits your skill set. And I have many friends and several teamies that come to mind that absolutely they're meant for this. I would never tell them to do it another way, but it's about 1%. Okay. So that's going the influencer route. Okay. The next route is the investment route. And this is when, and this is where it's a mistake that I see a lot of newbies make because they think this is what they need to do to start a business. And it's never how I would tell a newbie to start their business. And that is to create a business around the company that you've joined, meaning you start a separate Facebook business page or you create an entirely separate Instagram account that's dedicated towards educating your customers or the people that you know on your product. And then what happens is you're trying to funnel down the people you're already connected to into a much smaller audience that may or may not be interested or may not even see your post or your business page. And then even worse, the algorithms like Instagram and Facebook owns Instagram, they're going to want you to pay to boost, like literally invest your dollars into boosting or getting it out there and building a business. Now, I know of some leaders, they are out there that do sell and do very good in business, both personal sales, quietly by doing things like ads on content that they have created in the past to be able to invest, say, a thousand dollars in their business to generate thousands of dollars in their business. I'm not going to say it can't be done, but guess what? It is an investment and you better be making money before you spend the money on anything like an ad. Okay. I would say no more than 25% is that of the amount that you're bringing in should you be putting back into your business on something like ads. Okay. So the other thing is investment doesn't necessarily have to be your money. It can also be your time. So I'm putting things like, for example, my YouTube channel. That is technically an investment. It's something that I am having to invest my time. I even bought a YouTube course because I'm like, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it right. And I'm going to figure out what's effective. And I'm going to make that investment of one hour of my week to create the content. I am investing in an incredible assistant who's helping me edit that content and put it up there. And I'm going to be unapologetic about that because that is something that, again, I'm putting myself in that investment category and I'm choosing very intentionally to invest in that platform, okay? I met a gal at our company's reward trip in Mexico. Was that last week? I guess it was. I got to go on that. And she is amazing. And she's built a fabulous business on a Facebook business page. And once again, can it be done? It using investing her time going live just about every single day, really focusing in on some hard things she's been through in her life to be able to show up and serve and share 
the stories of her life in that way on her business page, yes, it absolutely can be done. But it's going to take you investing your time. It's going to take you investing your money and investing in the learning aspects of how to do it right. And I'm here to tell you as a traditional business owner, before I was a network marketer, it is not easy to build a following online, okay? It's not easy to build a business online. It's very hard. And network marketing doesn't have to be that hard, you guys. All it is just sharing your product with the people that already know you, meeting new people along the way, finding ways to connect with them further, creating conversations about it, educating here and there about, about the product. It doesn't have to look like starting a business and you say, hi guys, I've started a new business. Please help me out and follow me and buy my thing. Okay. Again, isn't something that can't work, but it is a little bit more of a challenge. And it is something that you have to, if you're going to go that path, you better be intentional about it. You better do it in the way you're going to have to learn all the things you're going to have to spend the time. You're going to have to invest your time over time, meaning it's going to have to build on it. If you go that route of the investment, meaning a business page or a separate Instagram account, or if you're totally taking on something like a YouTube channel or a website or something along those lines. Okay. So that is, or a blog would be another example of that. That is the investment route. Okay. All right. So you're ready for the fourth one. And I saved this one for last because this is the one that I am going to be going back to. This is what I'm going to be using. And this is also how I started my business. And it's how I have seen probably again, if we've got 2% or 1% in ignore, 1% in the influencer, we'll throw another 5% in for the for the investment side. So what is that? So 92% or we'll just call it like 90% of people started and grew their network marketing business by integrating their product into their social media, which social media, just as a reminder, it's intended. Now granted, it has grown into a platform for businesses to share and market to the users. But the way it was started and the way it's best used and the thing that I miss the most is being able to intentionally connect with those you love, those that love you, the people who maybe already are your customers, the people who maybe have been stalking you for a minute and might buy from you, the people that want to know all the things that you're doing because they're your friends or the people, even if they're like online friends, like virtual friends that just found you and they're like, oh, I like her or the person you sat next to on the airplane or the person you met at that conference. You know, these people that you are connected with online and it doesn't take a huge following of them, okay? I think that's one of the reasons why Facebook maxes out at, or I don't even know if they still do, but when I was at it last, they faxed out at 5,000 5, friends, I believe. And I think people could follow you, but then it becomes almost like a business, right? That's like an investment thing. So I can tell you, you don't, again, you don't have to have a huge following. You just have to be able to be a real human. And you might have been treating your personal page like an investment account, meaning, all you're doing, maybe you've been a part of other companies and you're kind of throwing up all of the things, like nothing about the other facets of your life outside of your product on your business page, meaning graphic this and marketing that, this sale, this, that, nothing about your real life, not even your face. I see that even sometimes people make that mistake. They want to get to know you. They want to know what your kids are doing. They want to know where you're going on vacation. People love to see it. And the more real, the better. People aren't looking for perfect. They want someone that they can feel rela relatable to. And actually, crazy enough, and she would probably fall, she might fall in the integrate category, but one of the top sellers in our company, she's so relatable. She's she's probably an influencer, I would say. She does the influencing because she's mid-sized mama. So she's done her niche as like mid-sized mama and she's done amazing things, but she's so relatable because people feel like, okay, if she can do it, I can do it. And that's what's made it beautiful. And that is something that you can duplicate by integrating your product into your already existing, likely, because you probably already have a Facebook page, you probably already have an Instagram, you can integrate your business into those things. Don't be scared to do that. And the thing about this, and this is gonna be the hardest thing for me as a strategist and some by someone who has to, I'm a goal getter, right? You guys know that about me. And so it's hard for me not to want to go all in on something like the influencer or the investment route, which I've done both before. Okay. But I really believe that the integrate method of sharing about my life and business and sharing that my daughter just scored her first goal in her second lacrosse game she's ever played. And I'm so stinking proud of her. And I want to post that video somewhere. Okay. So I'm going to post that video on Facebook. And I'm so excited about that. But guess what? If my company is also doing some sort of special next month, or if I do an in-person gathering with a few of my local friends, I'm going to 
post about that too, because I know that the people that know me and love me, they are happy to see those things if I'm not just completely constantly throwing up like flashy business graphics and things like that. They want to hear from me. They want to know the facets of my life. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with integrating your business into your personal. And so there's no strategy here. I'm not telling you that you need to like post this many times a day and post about your business X, Y, Z. But as a general rule, and this is something we've always always said is about 20%. So like one in five posts. If you're the type of person that posts like five times a week, maybe one of those is about your business, okay? If you're a couple times a day, it might be that you talk about your business a couple times a week, okay? And again, you if you're gonna go the route of, I'm gonna go live every day on this at this time, or if you're the type of person that loves those kind of consistent actions, then maybe going the investment route and starting like, again, a business page that you could even share your personal page here and there, that might be a better route. But if you just want to be someone who loves people and loves meeting people, and even if it's a small amount of people and you want to be able to serve them with the product or the business model that has changed your life or changed the lives of those around you, then you should, can and should not hold back from sharing that with the people who know and love you. They want to know, they need to know, and you should share that with them. And so those are the four methods. And I know this is getting long and I want to keep this short, but rest assured, I'm going to be carrying this conversation forward for the next bit here. We're gonna be chatting in depth about each of these in the coming episodes. I'll also be doing interviews of people who are doing this really well in each of these categories so that you can be inspired by how they run and how they build their business. But the four ways are ignore, influencer, investment, or integrate. And I am super excited to officially announce that I am gonna be coming back socially to Facebook and I will be sharing this podcast. So if you're watching this, hi friends, hopefully you're excited to be able to, to dive into all the things. If you haven't caught up on the podcast, there's tons more along this topic. But the reason that I'm doing it is just like I said, I miss you guys. I miss being able to connect with the people that I know and love, whether they're high school friends or my family, my cousins, or whether they're on my team or they're my friends in other companies or people I've met along the way, I wanna be able to stay connected and to be honest, I think just like we don't need to stop driving cars altogether, we need to be the stronger voice. I want to be more of a present and vocal voice on how you can do this business in a way that does honor your priorities, that does honor your integrity, and it doesn't have to look like something that's draining or that's going to cause burnout or is going to lead to people on your team who feel like they can't do the same things that you're doing, okay? So this conversation is going to continue, but I want to leave you with one question. If you don't know which one of these you are and you're struggling with, oh gosh, Heather, you just dropped this bomb in my lap. I've been trying to grow my Instagram, but I don't know, maybe I want to go a different path. I'm going to give you one tip. And this kind of goes back to an episode that I did a couple episodes ago, talking about how to know if it's God's will to start, stop, or grow your business. And the answer to that is you're going to ask the Lord for wisdom and inspiration, because as he says in James, which James is the brother of Jesus. So I love that. That's one of my, the reasons it's one of my favorite books. It's just the historical aspect of it. But he says that if you're, if you need wisdom, ask for it and you will be given it every time. Okay. So pray about this, ask about this. What is the best path for you? Trust me. I've been praying about this for a minute, like months about this time. And I am prayerfully very excited to know that this is the right best step for me to choose that integrate method and step back in baby steps towards social media by using Facebook socially. That is what I've got for you guys today. Hopefully this was helpful. And like I said, I know I gave you a lot. There's going to be lots more coming. So make sure to subscribe if you are listening on the podcast or the YouTube channel. Yay. Hi. And stay tuned for lots more where this came from. Love you guys so much. Y'all have a great week.